Welcome back, everyone. In today's episode of Stock Secrets, I've got another great high probability strategy for you that's probably going to blow your mind. This one doesn't trigger a lot of signals, but when it does trigger signals, the win probabilities are in the 90% range for most of the major US indexes. So stick around, because if you love winning strategies, this one is an all time classic. Yet, here we are, an astonishing 93% win rate. Other than March of 2020, this strategy hasn't produced a losing trade since April of 2012. Can you imagine winning every single trade that you made for nine years in a row? That's just amazing. Please remember that if you enjoyed this video or any of my research, both on YouTube and our website, please let me know by subscribing, leaving a like, and writing a comment. If you're new here, we have three ongoing series on the channel. The first one is Portfolio Analysis, where we dig into long-term, mostly passive portfolios. The next is Retirement Planning, where we cover various financial independence and early retirement topics. And finally, this series, Stock Secrets, where we dig into active management and trading strategies. If you're here for the portfolio challenge, don't worry, that is underway, and I'll have an update for you soon. Seriously though, if you like this series, Stock Secrets, you're gonna need to let me know about it, because I lost a handful of subscribers on the previous RSI strategy video, and that's got me thinking that the viewers of my channel really are not interested in learning these types of advanced strategies. Last week we covered the RSI Power Zone strategy and I got some feedback that people wanted to see this strategy in practice rather than just looking at historical backtest results. So let's do a quick retrospective of some trades that I closed last week which use this strategy for the entry signal. All of these trades use the RSI Power Zone strategy for their entry. Visa, Adobe, Oracle, Brazil ETF, Pinterest, Dollar General, Autodesk, and United Health. Let's start with Dollar General, which was the only loss of the group. Note that this Adobe loss is actually the protective leg of a bull put spread, so it's not actually a loss. Don't worry if you don't know what that means. We haven't covered spreads on this channel yet. This trade ended up being a 95% loss, and there's really not much that I could have done to win this one. We received the buy signal on January 21st, and we could see that for the last 11 years, the strategy has an 83% win rate, which is right in the probability range that I want my trades to be in. On the morning of the 21st, I was able to buy a call option, and throughout the day, the trade was going really well. In fact, at one point the trade was up $150, and I was going to take profits, but since this account has less than $25,000 in it, closing the trade out on the same day that you open the trade would trigger the pattern day trader penalty, so I decided against it. That turned out to be a bad decision. I only bought a 10-day call option, and as you're about to see, the stock completely breaks down. By the 29th of January, We've seen two massive bearish engulfing candles, and we've breached the 200-day moving average, so it's clear that at this point, the trade is going to be a loser, and there's probably no salvaging it. I ended up closing on February 2nd, which is three days before my option would have expired for a 95% loss. Next up, we have United Health. We received the buy signal on January 29th, but... I waited until the 5th to enter the trade. I was actually waiting for confirmation from another strategy of mine before I opened the trade. When that second confirmation did come on the 5th, I entered the trade. Normally, I set a limit order to automatically sell my options at a 50% profit. 
But for this trade, I ended up manually closing the position two days later for a 43% gain. Okay, so there's two real world live trades using the RSI Power Zone strategy that we learned from last week. I don't want you to think that you're going to win all your trades, so I wanted to show you a loser to go along with the winners. Today I'm going to teach you a strategy known as the Basic Bollinger. It only requires just one indicator. An indicator is just an overlay that we add to a candlestick chart to better understand price action. The indicator that we're using today is known as the Bollinger Bands. This strategy doesn't trigger a lot of buy signals, but when those signals are triggered, I highly recommend that you consider taking advantage of them. This is a typical Bollinger Bands indicator. It consists of a channel, basically three data points or bands. The middle band is usually the 20 day simple moving average, and the top band is two standard deviations above the middle band, and the bottom band is two standard deviations below the middle band. When the current price is nearing the top upper band, the security is said to be in an overbought condition. And when it's nearing the lower band, it's said to be in an oversold condition. If the top and middle bands are narrow, then this means that volatility is low, which tells us that we should be buying options. And if the bands are very wide, then that implies high volatility, so we should be selling options and collecting premium. If the bands are narrowing, this usually tells us that there's a large breakout of some kind coming soon. The rules for the basic Bollinger strategy are fairly simple, just four of them. Rule number one, set the Bollinger Band's moving average length to 20. In most charting software, this is the default value. Rule number two, set the upper and lower bands to two standard deviations. This is also the default value for most charting software. Rule number three, enter a position when the closing price crosses above the lower band. And rule number four, exit the trade when the last price or closing price touches the upper band. Let's apply this strategy to the chart and evaluate how this strategy performed. You aren't going to have this strategy yet, but don't worry, in the last part of the video, we're going to create this strategy together. And of course, the full source code is available on the website if you prefer to just copy and paste the code in order to follow along. For this strategy, I've set the backtest start period to January 1st, 2010, and the end period to December 30th of 2030. Since this isn't a long-term investment strategy, I'm not all that concerned with how the strategy performed 31 years ago. In 1990, I'm more interested in how it's done over the last 11 years or so. We're currently looking at the S&P 500 ETF SPY, and you might want to run this back test on your own spy chart just to be sure that I'm not messing with you. Because look at that win rate. I hope your mother taught you that there's no such thing as a free lunch. If something's too good to be true, then it isn't true. Yet, here we are. An astonishing 93% win rate. Other than March of 2020, this strategy hasn't produced a losing trade since April of 2012. Can you imagine winning every single trade that you made for nine years in a row? That's just amazing. What about some of the other liquid ETFs? How did they perform? Well, let's take a look. NASDAQ 100, 83% win rate. Russell 2000 small cap, 80% win rate. Utilities, 83% win rate. Consumer staples, 87% win rate. Semiconductors, 88% win rate. These are just mind-boggling probabilities here. Okay, so we know that this strategy did very well for a lot of the liquid ETFs. How did it do on individual stocks? Well, that's super dangerous. 
Well, let's take a look at some of the stocks on my watch list just to have a peek. United Health, 94% win rate. Microsoft, 84% win rate. Visa, 82% win rate. Apple, 82% win rate. Tesla, 81% win rate. Adobe, 75% win rate. So there you have it. There's a wide range of markets where we know based on the previous 11 years of history that this strategy has performed very, very well. Like I said earlier, the strategy doesn't trigger a lot of buy signals, but when it does, if that market happens to be one of these high win rate markets, I highly recommend considering placing a trade. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and create the strategy. I know from the YouTube analytics that virtually nobody watches these segments, but I don't care. I'm going to keep doing them because I refuse to believe that there isn't somebody out there who would like to learn how to do this. So we're going to create a new strategy and we're going to call this strategy the Basic Bollinger. The first rule is to set the middle band moving average length to 20 and then enter the trade when the closing price crosses above the lower band and exit when the closing price touches the upper band. The SM le SMA length, which is the middle band, we're going to set to 20. The standard deviation, we're also going to set to 20. The upper band offset, we're going to set to 2.0. The lower band offset, we're going to set to 2.0 as well. We'll set the back test start date as January 1st, 2010, and the back test end date at December 31st, 2030. We'll create a function called test period where we're going to check if the current bar is within this time frame range. Then the SMA value, we're going to get the 20 day moving average. We're going to get the standard deviation value. We're going to recreate the upper band as being the SMA plus the standard deviation times the upper band offset. Lower band is the SMA minus the standard deviation times the lower band offset. Next, we want to plot the three bands on the chart. So we make a copy of that line and set the upper band and the lower band plots. Now we'll define our long condition, which is going to be whenever the closing price crosses over the lower band. And the closing of the long condition will be whenever the closing price is greater than or equal to the upper band. If the long condition is true and we're within the desired time frame, then we will initiate the strategy enter. And this is a long strategy and we'll enter 100 units. And then we will define a strategy close. Whenever the close long condition variable is true, which is when the price is greater than or equal the upper band. Now we're going to attempt to add this onto the chart and we won't be able to because there's a syntax error. So we don't need that semicolon. This is not JavaScript. I don't know what I was thinking there. So we got rid of that. Now we'll try. Try a second time to add to the chart. Fail as well. Another syntax error. And here this was an equals, not a minus by mistake. So we'll fix that. And then third time's a charm. Add to the chart again. And presto. Good job. We're on there. The strategy has been successfully applied to the chart. And we see our 93% win rate when we apply this strategy to the S&P 500.